It's a busy day on engine power. We finish up the Ford Endurance engine and check the numbers in the dyno cell. Then we take a road trip to Ohio, where the BMR race team takes delivery of the most powerful engine their Fox Body Racer has ever seen. We're talking almost triple the horsepower. Welcome to Engine Power. Today we're back on an engine build we're putting together for an endurance race team that calls Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course its home. The team is BMR, made up of hardcore corner carvers that also have the daily duties of performance driving instructors. One of them is a world-renowned open wheel racer who dominated the Formula Ford series and even found a seat in F1. His name is Tommy Byrne, and he is a subject of a new documentary called Crash and Burn. To find out more, visit PowerNationTV.com and click on this Engine Power episode. The engine is a 363 cubic inch small block Ford. Now it came together as a group effort between Summit Racing, Pat and I, and the BMR guys. The reason was simple. They needed more power to compete with BMWs, Porsches, and other makes and models in the Mid-Ohio Champ Car Racing Series. We completed the short block in a previous show. It came together using a Dart Iron Eagle block, Lunati Forge crankshaft with a 3400 stroke, Eagle 4340 H-beam rods, and custom DSS X-Groove pistons. This is our foundation for an 8,000 RPM capable engine designed to run long endurance races with minimal maintenance and maximum performance on pump gas. Today we're going to start out with some tech that's a little bit of science, a little bit of work, but not a lot of money. What we're trying to do is stop the engine from flooding the valve train with oil and starving our rod and main bearings. So we are going to restrict oil to the top side of the engine. Now the dart block design has provisions for this operation. Because this engine can be used for either wet or dry sump oiling, it gives you options on how to control oil to the top end. We will be using an oil pump in a conventional way, wet sump, so oil will come in and go to the main oil gallery. Now, oil can come up through these two crossovers and oil these simultaneously, but because we want it priority main, we will block the oil from coming up, forcing it to go through the back of the block and come back up our crossover so it will oil forward. What we will be using to restrict the oil are eighth inch pipe plugs. The block is drilled and tapped to receive them on both of the crossovers. So one with an 80 thousandths orifice will go in the back to restrict oil to the lifter bores. In the front will be a solid plug so it forces the oil through the main oil gallery first, oiling the mains, rods, and cam bearings. A solid roller valve train design is being used. This one came to us from Summit Racing. Now a solid roller should only be used in high horsepower street applications and race bullets that don't see a lot of low RPM operation. They also have the most aggressive low profiles and can withstand extreme valve spring pressures with no problems. It's a CompCam's Magnum series. It's a single pattern with the duration at 50 thousandths of 262 degrees on the intake and exhaust. It has 110 degrees of lobe separation and the lift at the valve is 613 thousandths on both the intake and exhaust. This cam will produce a radical idle, require you to check piston to valve clearance, and is designed to run in our desired operating range. Now the cam retaining plate can be bolted up and a Cloy's Race Billet True Z Racing Roller Timing Set is being installed in the 4 degrees retarded position. Now the camshaft can be degreed. It was degreed in at 109 degrees intake center line, which is one degree advanced. This will give a good balance of both low and high end power for this application. Now this process is important in all engine builds and Summit Racing has some great degreeing kits to add to your tool arsenal. Now that our short block is together and our camshaft is degreed in, we can move on to the induction side and we're going to do something a little bit different on this project. We'll be using a set of TrickFlow Twisted Wedge 11Rs. Now these differ from a normal small block Ford in their valve angles. 13 degrees on the exhaust side, 11 degrees on the intake side. These heads feature a fully CNC'd 205cc intake port that flows 321 CFM at 600 lift. It has a 56cc combustion chamber and the valve sizes are 2080 on the intake, 1600 on the exhaust, and they also have a 66cc exhaust port. 
The spring cups are a generous 1640, so that will allow us to set these up for almost any racing application, which I'm going to show you in a second. Valve springs will make or break a race engine, not only in how much power it makes, but for how long it makes it for. So we are going with a set of pack valve springs for this application. These are a 1 300 diameter, and we're setting them up at 1 850 installed height, which gives us 205 pounds on the seat and 550 pounds open pressure. And all of them were verified on our new Goodson valve spring tester. This is Goodson's in-house designed and manufactured spring tester. It has a 600 pound capacity and 10 pound increments. The analog pressure gauge reads an SAE and metric and the hydraulic load cell is sealed. It will handle springs up to two inches in diameter and four and a half inches overall height. Up next, the endurance engine gets ready to put in some serious miles. Nation is brought to you by Rock Auto. We're back, and before the heads go on, we are going to button up the front of the engine. This will allow us to set up the timing pointer at true TDC on the balancer. This is an all star timing cover from Summit Racing. It's a late model style designed for fuel injection applications. It's a nice, high quality casting. To eliminate torsional crankshaft vibrations, an ATI Super Damper Harmonic Balancer is being used. It exceeds an 18.1 SFI safety rating. This one is for internally balanced engines like this 363 inch small block Ford. With the engine at true top dead center, a billet aluminum timing point will be aligned with zero on the balancer. This will ensure proper ignition timing is set when we fire it up. In racing applications, the stock hex drive just won't cut it. This engine needs a heavy duty chromoly oil pump drive shaft from ARP. It will turn a melling high volume, high pressure oil pump. We've already mocked this up so we know the clearances are correct. The pickup was ordered from Summit Racing with the oil pan. It is a Canton piece and will pull oil from the rear sump. This pan has a seven quart capacity and is designed for road race use. Now inside is a removable windage anti-slosh baffle that is incorporated into the bottom of the pan. It is diamond shaped and has four trap doors located under this plate for excellent oil control. For an engine that's got to run 18 hours over two days, an oil leak is fatal. For maximum protection, we're using a Cometic oil pan gasket with Permatex right stuff sealant on both sides. Filling up the lifter bores are Crower's Severe Duty Solid Roller Lifters designed for race applications. They have an 874 thousandths diameter, vertical link bar, a special alloy body, and high pressure pin oiling. Cometic MLS head gaskets can go in place. These have a 4 155 bore diameter and a 27 thousandths compressed thickness. TrickFlow's 11R cylinder heads are laid in place and half inch ARP head bolts will secure them to the decks. Always make sure to follow ARP's instructions. We use their ultra torque lube under the head of the bolt and on the threads to make sure the ARP spec of 100 pound feet is accurately reached. A good amount of time went into making sure that the valve train is perfect on this engine. Jessel was our choice for a shaft rocker setup that will withstand anything this engine throws at it. Trend Performance sent us a set of their dual tapered 135 thousandths wall chrome molly push rods that have 5 16 ball ends. We spec them at a 7 600 length. Jessel's Sportsman Series rockers rest on a billet steel stand providing a rigid mounting surface. The rockers have a full complement needle bearing assembly which distributes load evenly across the shaft surface. The shaft is ground and heat treated tool steel for years of durable service. Our ratio is 1.7, 1.7. To learn more about heavy duty valve train parts, check out Jessel's website. Cold lash is 14 thousandths on both the intake and exhaust. A single plane TrickFlow R series manifold is gonna direct the air and fuel charge into the cylinder heads. This manifold accepts a 4150 style carburetor or throttle body and its operating range is from 3500 to 7500 RPM. As usual, a bead of Permatex right stuff silicone will seal it up and ARP fasteners will cinch it down. Up next, the BMR race team asks for big power and they're gonna get it. This is gonna be exciting right here. 
During the break, we finished off the engine with a set of cast valve covers and MSD distributor with an added touch of green for Tommy Byrne and his Irish background. Also bolted up is a Summit Racing catch can and breather setup. Up front, a Mazir electric water pump will keep this 363-inch Ford cool on the dyno. To get the rings seated and the engine broke in, we're going to be running our tried and true 950 CFM quick fuel dyno carb. Then it will be swapped out for the race team's choice of fuel injection. All right, here's where we are. We've got the engine on and run. We have actually broke it in and we've lashed the valve. So we are gonna make our first pull from 4,500 to 6,500 at 24 degrees of timing, just to see where we are. Remember, we're still on pump gas. Ooh, that's spicy. That thing really rips nice. through the pole at that, doesn't yeah. it? 532, oh, and 400, almost 450 pound-feet of torque. Pretty graph off the bat. Pretty graph off the bat. Again, this thing is on 24 degrees of timing. This thing has to run lap after lap for nine hours straight, and we are not even close to peak power. No. Let's make a pull for 5,000 to 7,500. Five to 75. Adding four degrees of timing for a total of 28, the engine made 560 horse at 7,400 and 452 pound-feet of torque at 5,600. Another two degrees of timing, 30 degrees total, yielded 569 horsepower and 455 pound-feet of torque. Dude, I am, I am extremely excited. Nice. I don't know if, if, I can, if, if you know how excited I am about this. It's, it's an awesome engine. And you know, something that's different than this too, being an endurance engine, we usually don't run them this hot with water temperature. No. The oil temperature, yes. But you know, there's, there's some power on the table if it was a drag race. There is absolutely power because you cool the chamber as much, you heat the oil up as much as, much as you can, and uh, you can go for that, that, that glory number. Mm -hmm. uh, but that means nothing when it has to run for nine hours. But in, in this, if you keep it, the, the timing right and you t keep the tune up right, this thing will last forever. We told them we were building them an anvil, yeah. and that's it. BMR requires a fuel and spark delivery system that works in virtually any racing condition. So we'll swap the carb for Holly Super Sniper 8 Injector EFI, along with their Pro Billet small cap distributor to handle the ignition duties. Using screws instead of clips on the cap will ensure the cap stays in place, even in the toughest driving situations. Woo! 575, 467. Pump gas, mammy jammer. That is pump gas. That, that, I mean, <laughs> 158 per cube, that, that is scaring uh, the 1.6 range, which is about the maximum you're going to get from 93 pump gas, you know, because it's so inconsistent. I, I'm excited to see this thing run. This has triple the power that these dudes have right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Triple. <laughs> Triple. I don't even know what to say. I'm almost speechless, which that is uncharacteristic for me. Hey. Success. Is that success? Beautiful. Up next, we check out BMR's Fox Body race car, and they check out their new bullet. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. We're, we are putting a passenger. Power Nation is brought to you by Rock Auto. Through the scenic farmland of Bucyrus, Ohio, we make our way toward Bill Berger's shop, delivering the 363 cubic inch engine that will power BMR Racing's Fox Body Mustang. Bill, how's it going? Not, not bad. Hi, Mike. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again, Bill. Great to see both of you. Car looks totally different. Yeah, we've done a lot of work to it. We've got hardwood hood, hardwood doors, hardwood hatch. We have Momo seat, Momo steering wheel, Alston dash, AM dash unit. Willwood brakes all the way around. QA1 front suspension, QA1 rear shocks. It's amazing, it's almost a whole new car. I love the color combo with the black and the silver. I picked that out. Did you? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, it looks good. Depending on where the pit wall is, you don't wanna to have to be running around the car with a can of gasoline. We can hook the fuel filler up on this side or we can hook it up on that side. Makes the pit stop faster and safer. Wow. You like that? I really like that. That looks really good. Now we got the engine. We're looking probably a completed car in 
four to five weeks and lots of testing to do. Summit Racing supports grassroots motorsports in all their forms, and this year they became the title sponsor of the American Endurance Racing Series. These racers drive a wide variety of domestic and import vehicles. Summit is listening to what they're saying. We're out talking to the racers. What do you guys need from us so we can support everybody that's racing out here? And uh, they've been very uh, welcoming and have uh, taken a lot of time to cover and talk to us and, and, and help us understand what else they need from us. Are you ready for this? Ooh, I see it in green. <laughs> <laughs> It'll make me drive a little faster knowing there's green on there somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's like sending your child for, off to school for the first time. Well, we will allow you visitation. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> this baby is yours and yours to keep now. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, guys, we're, we are putting a passenger seat yeah. in here. You're more than welcome oh. to ride along the first time. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we're very honored and, and, and flattered that you had us work on this. So uh, we're very, very pleased that we got to help you out on this. We're honored that you did it for us. Thank you very much. Oh, man, thank, thank, you, man. thank you guys. So, uh, well, the, the, now it's time. The, the talking's over. Let's uh, here, let's turn over some parts. Let's put it in. Let's, yeah. <laughs> you guys are here. Let's, let's just it. put it we in. It. On paper, right now, we're, we're up there with the, with the Ferraris and the Porsches and the BMWs, so I'm, I'm super excited to see what this thing looks like next to them, in front of them, actually. We have the right tools for the job to get it done now, um, and uh, we appreciate that. For more information on anything you've seen today, visit PowerNationTV.com. DEI's Starter Shield is part of their Versa Shield line of products and it will help protect your starter from heat failure. It will reflect radiant heat of up to 2,000 degrees and direct heat of up to 500 degrees. It's made from reflective aluminized material along with a glass fiber insulation barrier. The Starter Shield comes in two sizes, both of which can be trimmed to fit your starter precisely. The hook and loop fastening system lets you attach the shield without removing the starter in most cases. The shield can also be used for master cylinders, distributors, fuel pumps, and more. And you can learn all about it at designengineering.com. Hotshot Secret Stiction Eliminator was originally designed for international truck and engine. It's made up of a combination of detergents and dispersants that can be added to new or used motor oil. It will then remove buildup caused by coking and varnishing left behind from overheating the engine's oil. For diesels, it will clean injectors and stop excessive black smoke and chugging on cold starts. Check out HotShotSecret.com to learn more about the science behind it and how to purchase it for your ride. To have an engine make more power, a common technique is to increase its cubic inches. And you can do that three different ways. You can increase the bore size, the length of the stroke, or a combination of the two. You've heard the term stroker when talking about high performance engines. So that's what we're going to go over today. But what exactly does stroker mean? Simply put, it's an engine that has the stroke of its crankshaft increased beyond its stock specification. This mod can be done two different ways. First, you can offset grind the crankshaft. Before aftermarket crankshafts were readily available, the crankshaft's rod journal would be intentionally ground to a smaller diameter and to a center line further from the actual center of the crankshaft. This effectively lengthened the travel of the piston in the cylinder, increasing its cubic inches. But the offset grind yielded a small increase because the crankshaft can only be ground so much. In addition, it was labor intensive, expensive, and potentially weakened the stock crankshaft. The second method is to replace the stock component with a purpose-built aftermarket crankshaft. These are designed specifically for longer strokes, are constructed out of better material, and are built to yield maximum cubic inches without sacrificing strength. We build stroker engines here all the time, and they fall into three categories. Oversquare, meaning the bore is larger than the stroke. Square, meaning the bore and stroke are equal. And undersquare meaning the bore is smaller than the stroke. Over square strokers are common in most racing applications. The larger bore and shorter stroke produce the needed air displacement while keeping the average piston speed lower at high RPM, which improves reliability and allows efficient air induction. Square strokers have a good balance of horsepower and torque production. They can be tailored to make stout low-end torque or high-end horsepower depending on the components selected. They are excellent for weekend warrior race cars and just about any high performance street car. Under square strokers really shine in lower RPM, high torque applications. 
When the engine's bore size is limited, an aftermarket crankshaft will increase the size by 50 or 60 cubic inches. For instance, a 351 Windsor with a 4030 overbore and a stock stroke of 3500 equals 357.15 inches. Increasing just the stroke to 4170 gives us 68.36 additional cubes. The result is a 425.53 cubic inch engine. Several aftermarket companies offer not only stroke or crankshafts, but entire rotating assemblies with all the associated parts to get your bullet together. The only thing that limits stroker applications are the physical size of the engine block and your bank account.